This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. <laughs> Fasten your seat belts, please. We're taking off. I have uh, many names that um, people are, are calling me, that friends are calling me, that students are calling me. One of them is the white butterfly because I, I never button the sleeves. Call me the white butterfly, so. <sighs> My uh, journey is, um, is amazing. From one day to the next, I'm uh, coming to huge understanding of uh, how selfish and stupid I am. Like every day the Creator brings another wave to wash my selfishness and my stupidity away from me and to help me, to cleanse me, to purify me from my bad attributes. And it's amazing how much there is to wash after long 20 years of tshuva. And I must tell you that I started very strong and I haven't stopped, I just increased, raised the speed of my work for sure. I haven't made one step back in my Avodat Hashem, only improved, only progressed. I can tell you small things that I did in my tshuva, so at least one year and a half I was not sleeping on a bed. I was just sitting on chairs and learning all night and wouldn't go to sleep at all. And if I would fall asleep, I would immediately wake up. And for many years, at least six, seven years, I would not go to sleep if I wouldn't stop, like finish learning from at least 50 different books every day. Every day means like I would finish my learning at 4 a.m. and then I would crash to sleep and if I would sleep in the middle I would wake up and keep on reading even if it would be until the next morning 7 a.m. 8 a.m. like that I would spend years of my tshuva and when I'm saying that I did thousands of hours of Hidbodedut individual prayer talking to the Creator in my own language it's only because that really more than 10 years of my tshuva, every, almost every, almost every night I would leave the house for minimum of 2 to 6 and sometimes even 11 and sometimes even 18 hours straight to the fields, to graves of righteous people, to the grave of Shimshon Agibor, in front of the city of Bet Shemesh, mm. in the village Eshtaol in Israel, to graves of other tzaddikim, and I would just talk for hours, on hours, on hours, almost every night. I had many friends, and every one of them survived, hold on with me for like, let's say, two months, three months, and every one of them crashed, and I took another one, and I would help him to help me and together we would go for another two months every night together going and he would crash and I would continue finding another one. And that's how I spend years of my life. Every day mikveh, even after Yom Kippur at night I would go and if there wouldn't be an open mikveh I would drive to the sea or to a spring or a lake or something in Israel. And I, I worked very in a very extreme way guarding of my eyes. For years I wouldn't open my eyes. I would go just looking at the ground. I went all the way in a very radical way. 
And I must tell you that it probably helped me a lot and it probably opened many gates for me, but it clarified something that all of this radical way was wrong and bent and twisted and it came out of a certain lacking inside of me, lack of understanding of how great is the love of the Creator to us. Now I had to go through all that way to understand that really you don't need to do anything that the Creator will love you. First of all, and that's the foundation, those are the foundations of Judaism, of the knowledge, ancient knowledge of truth, of the relationship between a creation, a child of a father, to his Creator, to his Father in Heaven. First of all, we must clarify and understand. It's based on an unconditional love. It's not depend in a love that depends in your effort, in your sweat, in your work. Now maybe out of your work and your effort you will achieve certain things, you will come to deep understanding, some things will open for you, but it will be only because that you gave something from yourself, only because that you dedicated an inner work. But the love from the side of the Creator to His children never lack a thing. He loves you as you are and you don't need to change and you don't need to improve that He will love you, that He will miss you, that He will care about you, that He will answer your prayers. For that you don't need to wake up in the middle of the night, for that you don't need to open books, for that you don't need to be the first one in the synagogue in the morning, for that you don't need to cover your head for Him to love you. He loves you. Now, after you realize that He loves you, then you can start showing your love to Him. First of all, in the blessings that we're saying before of Kriyat Shema, we're saying, Avat Olam Avtanu. You love us, an eternal love, a great love. First of all, He loves us. And then after we realize that He loves us, such a great love, then we can go and say Kriyat Shema. And when we're saying Kriyat Shema, we're saying, Ve'ahavta et Hashem Elokecha. Now you can go and love Hashem. Because before you realize that He loves you, you cannot love Him back. If you don't feel that your husband, He loves you, you cannot love Him back. You feel like you hate Him. If you don't feel that your wife, she loves you, you cannot love her back. If you feel that she hates you, so like, hey, am I giving my love here or that maybe I should stop? And you're going to start thinking. If you don't feel that there is love in the other side, you cannot love. Love is a result of love. Love is coming when you feel that you are loved. Why you have bad thoughts about your parents, why you have negative thoughts about certain people, because you haven't felt that they love you completely. So now you're thinking, you're calculating your moves, you're checking with yourself. Should I open up myself if I'm not going to receive, if I'm not going to be loved back, if I'm not going to be welcome, if I won't be accepted, respected, I cannot love like that. I cannot open myself just to be hurt again, just to be insulted. That's the nature of human beings. Now the Creator, He understands that. And that's why He is standing and loving. And we don't need to make Him love us. We don't need to make Him like us. He loves you, an unconditional love. And He created each and every one of us in the best and most beautiful way that He could have. And He knows exactly what will be the best things to give to each and every one of us to our lives. To make our lives meaningful and beautiful and inspiring. And the fact that we are suffering and the fact that we are going through many difficulties and we're facing challenges in, love, in life, it's not because of lack of love of the Creator to His children. 
Because when really someone hates another one, another person, he will destroy him. He will revenge. He will make him disappear from the world. And the Creator never does that. The Creator always helps and always provides and always bringing us to the next stage. Now what's the problem? Why so many times in our life we're finding ourselves facing challenges with no ends, walls to climb that we cannot see their top. Why we're facing such difficulties with no ends and we don't know what to do? Because we don't understand the mission of our lives. We don't understand how deep and how great and how fantastic and awesome our life can be as they are right now if we will focus into our inside and not going to be stuck in the external world that is surrounding us. Because let's say that you found yourself in a Jewish community and there is a fantastic synagogue and everyone are welcoming you and there are classes and you can come to the prayers and you can enjoy things of the community and they have events and holidays together and have the line Motzei Shabbat and everything is perfect. Third meal, Shabbat and they're also watching over the kids like heaven. You don't need anything. It's perfect. If you're going to start slavering yourself to become a slave of that community, that they won't kick you, that they will like you, that they will accept you, that they will respect you, that they will save your seat, that you, I don't know what, you became a slave to people and you lost God. What's the benefit of being a slave of people? Because they look good, because they sound good, so you found for yourself a nice master, because he's rich, because he's clean, because you're a slave. Don't be a slave. Be who you are. That's the mission of your life. Your mission of your life is to understand that the Creator, that He knows all, that He understands everything, that He knows every detail, that He has a perfect memory that remembers every detail from first moment of creation and before. From before time been invented. And He knows everything that everyone else forgotten. And He knows the quality and the nature of every particle in creation. And He knows exactly why there's a certain fiber in, in, in like one string, one thread in your sweater that came from a different country than all the rest. And you don't know, and you would never think about it, you need someone crazy like me to come and tell you that there is one thread that is different in your sweater, but there is a purpose for that. Because the person that made that wool, he had a certain thought, and that thought put a certain spiritual spark in that thread. And that thread with that spiritual spark is completing the rest of those threads that came from a different country. Because the people that made them over there were not complete in a certain aspect. And that person from a different country he was perfect just in that specific point and together the Creator made that combination that all of that fantastic wisdom will wrap you will cover you with a certain color with a certain feeling certain touch in a certain day in a certain moment in front of certain people because he knows all and he understands what will be the effect of your purple sweater today and gray sweater tomorrow in front of those people entering to that facility, to that house, to that synagogue and walking in those streets and those alleys. And he's inside and behind all those information, all that knowledge. And you don't need to bother yourself with that. You just need to understand that he knows what is the best thing for you. That's why He created you in this height or in that height, with those colors or with different colors, with this accent to that family, with the color of those eyes, with the ability to express yourself or to forget who you are. I don't remember why you came in the first place. He knows exactly why He's bringing you to every situation and situation in your life now the purpose of all those situations is to connect you 
to your true self. To your true self means to the one that He created you to be. To His wisdom of being the creator of the world, the one that created you exactly as you are. For you with those lackings, for you with those qualities, for you in your eyes. But in the eyes of the Creator, He created you in a perfect way, perfect for the purpose that you've been created for. And for that we must focus and observe and look and ask for Him and seek for Him and look for His deep love and His inner intention in every part of our life, every path that we walked on. A friend of mine told me, I'm so sad on years that I lost not learning Torah, not being connected to my nature, to whatever, to do tshuva. I told him without those 20 years, you wouldn't start that process that you just started in the age of 35. You started at 35 in a certain level because for the other 35 years, you were climbing out of the swamp of despair that your life started at. Now, you didn't saw yourself because you still felt filthy, because your eyes were blocked, because you couldn't recognize anything around you, because you were busy on in climbing from the swamp, climbing from the black bitterness of your sorrow and your depression and your despair. So you couldn't see anything. But when your eyes started to open and when your heart started to feel, so immediately you've been pulled to the light. Like a fly that, that flies to the light. Because suddenly you started to feel. But many layers been pulled from you when you were still in darkness and you couldn't see. Now you thought that only the last layer that opened your eyes in the age of 35 or 40 or 20 was the meaningful layer. But it was only that layer that you recognized. Many layers been removed from your eyes in earlier years. When you've been insulted, when you've been ashamed, when you've been hurt, when you went to be alone, when you found yourself eating that dinner alone with no people around you, when you decided to leave the party in the middle, when you smoked too much, when you drank too much, those life experiences opened your eyes. Even if you still couldn't recognize the light yet, at least you recognized yourself. You realize that you've been cheated. You realize that you cheated others. You realize that you were a liar or that someone lied to you. You had many deep clarifications and understandings before of connecting yourself, so to speak, to heaven. Because in our arrogant mind, we thought that when we were 35, we connected ourselves to the Creator. You haven't connected yourself to no one yet. And you know what's the problem? You never will. Because you're already connected and surrounded in and out by His loving Spirit that gives life to you, that stands you on your feet. The breath of air that you breathe is Him. The power of eyesight that you can see is His eyesight that is transferred to, through you, through your power of awareness. Your ability to smell is His. Your ability to taste, to think, to remember, to hear, to feel, to, to, to want, to desire. Those are all spiritual qualities of the Creator. Flesh and bones cannot feel those things. The tongue doesn't feel the taste. Your mind feels the taste. Where is your mind? It's your brain? No, the brain cannot feel the taste. It's your soul. It's your spirit. It's the godliness that is installed inside of you because you are a chelek eloka mimal, portion of heaven from above. That's who you are in the nature and secret and purpose of your creation. You're a beam of light that is trapped in a physical body. You are a holy soul 
that is treasured inside a physical body in a vehicle. And as a soul, you have a meaningful purpose to function in a divine way of connecting and reconnecting yourself to your true spiritual nature of being a godly creation, of being a messenger of the Creator in the dark world, Alma de Shikra, world of light. And in that prison that calls this world, we are trapped in physical bodies for a purpose. The purpose is not to be that body, is to function through that body, is to use that body, is to use the tools that we received from heaven to work with in our secret mission. And everyone has a different mission. And you know what your mission is. Sometimes you're afraid to admit that that's your mission. Sometimes it's hard for you to appreciate that mission because your self-esteem been destroyed so many times. Because you've been humiliated and criticized for so many years on your behavior, on your look, on how you sound, on how you function, on how you remember. So it crushed your self-esteem in a way that today you find it so hard to admit that you are important, that your soul is godly, that you're on a mission. But when you see that lonely cat, that poor starving thirsty cat, you know that you have a mission with him. When you see that person, that neighbor, when you see that car, when you see those birds, when you see those clouds, when you see that fantastic, nice notebook that you can write your poems on it, in it, you know you have a purpose. Your problem is your self-esteem. That's your problem. The evil inclination works for thousands of years to destroy our self-esteem, to make us feel like the worst of them all. That was the work of the Nazis, that was the work of the Greeks, that was the work of the Egyptians to pretend to put in front of us all of our lackings to show to us that we're not eternal. They don't have share with the God of Israel. You are look you look like you you you're like like um, rats, like mice. You carry diseases. You're ugly. You're stupid. You're all um, have lusts and desires. You you like, all the most filthiest things that you can say on a person. Everyone corrupt. Everyone are evil. To erase your identity, the nature of your true soul. The real good spirit that lives inside of you, that is shining, that is desiring only to do good, that is willing to hear good news from everyone, that is hoping to see everyone blooming and, 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 and getting healthy and succeed. That simple, innocent spirit of yours is facing all powers of darkness that are fighting with it, with who you really are, to destroy your self-esteem, that you will give up on your true self. That you will forget your real identity and that you will think that you should be one of them, like them. And them can be your Jewish ultra-Orthodox community. It doesn't have to be a different nation. You can forget your identity in your own house in front of your Shabbos table with your beloved ones. You can forget who you are and what's your purpose if on that table. Them is the outside world. You is your inside world. Your inside world is the positive thoughts of hope, of love, of grace. Your good yearnings your holy desires, your dreams, your hopes to bring redemption, really to see everyone happy and healthy. That's the real you. And you need to water that real you. You need to recognize that poor seed of God and to nurture it, to give it life. First of all, to give it a space means respect. You need to respect yourself. You need to love yourself based on the understanding that the Creator loves you. And He gave you the opportunity to be who you are. He sent you because He appreciates you. 
Like we say in the morning, מודה אני לפניך, I thank you, מלך חי וקיים, the king that he is live and exist, שחזרת בי נשמתי בחמלה, that you gave me back my soul, with mercy, with huge mercy, רבה אמונתך, your faith is great. Your faith is great? Which faith? In what? In who? Hashem believes. Rabbi Munatecha. Hashem's faith is great. Hashem believes in the Bible. Hashem believes in the, in the holy tablets, in Moses. In who? He believes in you. He believes in you. That's why He helped you to wake up this morning. Because He believes that you have a chance to succeed. That you can make it. That's why we're praising Him. That He believes in me. That He believes in us. That He believes in you. That's why He gave you this day. To reconnect yourself to who you are. Because that's the only thing that you can be. Is who you really are. You cannot be someone else. You cannot be Him and you cannot be her. You cannot be me and I cannot be you. No matter how many surgeries I'm going to make, I won't be you. No matter, no matter how much effort I'm going to put in changing myself, maybe I'm going to be a more progressed model of myself. I won't be someone else. Even if I will pretend to be someone else, even if I'm going to imitate someone else, even if I'm going to make plastic surgeries, I won't be him. I will always be who I am. And the evil inclination, the Yetzirah, in front of your eyes, putting one billion, two billion people, two billion options, opportunities of being like him, being like her. You need to be that rich. You need to have that kind of a job. You need to have that relationship. You need to live in that area. All those things are the distractions. System of lies of that damned snake that is working day and night on taking you away from the real purpose of your life. To be who that the Creator made you to be. The one that knows exactly who you really are and what's your real mission and sent you to accomplish and complete that one. And you need to connect yourself to heaven. The way to connect yourself to heaven is through that heavenly part that is installed inside of you. That's your soul. That's your spirit. Your nefesh. Your nefesh elokit. Your godly spirit. Your godly spirit is the good spirit that lives and flames inside of you. The holy passion to do good, to be honest, to be kind. Those are your good attributes. Those are your perfect manners. That's who you dream to be. That's who you feel you should be. That's who you not always dare to be. When I said to my father, I want to start to keep Shabbat, my father still doesn't keep Shabbat. When I told him I want to keep Shabbat, he answered to me in a very simple way. He told me, don't make a joke out of yourself, turned his back on me and walked away. When I said to my mother that I want to start keeping Shabbat, she said to me, I'd rather you gonna be gay than religious. Those were my response. Welcome to the battle of your life. That was those were the doors that been opened widely for me to enter into the world of tshuva. No, sorry, not welcome. Only when my wife started to believe in me, I found powers inside of myself to grow. Before there's someone that believes in you, you cannot grow. I'll give you an advice. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself and believe in others. Stand in front of the mirror and remind of yourself, remind yourself of your good qualities. Who you were when you were five years old, when you were 12 years old, when you were 15. 
If you want to say, but look, when I was 15, I did this. When I was 17, I did that. You don't know how many sins. You don't know how many crimes. You're talking about my qualities. You're talking about those fantastic things. But what with all the crimes? What with all the sins? What with all the horrible things that I did in my life that I don't even want to remember? What with all those horrible things? I'm going to invite you and call you to go into a deep journey inside of yourself and go and investigate there. Face one of your fears for a beginning. Stand in front of your own life and deal with a certain situation that for you it's one of the most horrible moments of your life that you sabotaged, destroyed, humiliated, broke your own life. One of your biggest failures in the world, the biggest shames that you're begging to heaven not to remind you in the world to come and for sure not to let your wife know about it, please. I'll tell you. Take that experience and put it in front of your eyes. Now go and ask yourself the deepest questions of them all. Why you did that? And don't judge yourself. Don't criticize yourself. Don't say because I was stupid, because I was selfish. No titles, no names. Ask yourself, why did I, me, myself, why have I done that? Really? Now, yes, it was horrible. I understand. I don't want to do that again. But me, myself, what brought me to that act, to that horrible action? And then you will see a frightened and lost child that didn't have no idea how to deal with the situation that he was facing. A whole innocent and poor guy that was standing over there that didn't know what to do with the opportunity that he had to experience love or to run away from his fears. You were only trying to survive even when you caused the worst damage of your life. It was only a result of you following your fears, being poor and lonely and scared in life. In life that you've never been taught how to deal with, that you've been misguided thousands of times with the wrong and worst advice, how to deal with situations that you've been educated in a bent and twisted and awful way on who you should be and what you should become. You don't want to know things that I heard from my parents. Oh, deep de conversations of education. Worse. Cannot be educated by people. Because there is a higher voice that is talking to you from within. That's your conscience. That's your inner feeling. That's the nature of your intuition that is calling you all the time and knocking and begging, listen, please don't go there, please don't do that. Why are you answering the phone? Why you keep on dating with them? Why you keep on going to those meetings? Why you keep on working there? Please don't do that to yourself. Why are you answering him? Why you keep on going to those bad places? All those voices that you ignore on daily basis are the voices that are trying to save your life from following your fears. No, I must answer. If I won't answer, they won't talk to me. They won't call me again. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to lose my job. They won't like me. They're going to scream at me. I can't deal with those arguments anymore. That's when you follow your fears. And when you follow your fears, you're falling into them. Because then they will have the evidence for you and they will come and attack you again in another moment of weakness and they can destroy your self-esteem. Oh, you're such a failure, they're telling you. After failing you with their f f poor advice, with their awful suggestions, but you have the power in your hand. It's the staff of life. The free choice is in your hand. The ability to choose to swim against the stream of life. 
to go against society, to be who you are in the nature of your creation, to be that individual and unique and perfect one that the Creator made you to be with your talents, with your sense of humor, with your treasures, with your senses, with your memory, with the power of your imagination, with your talents for acting, for singing, for sports, for like art, I don't know what. To be who you are and to use those tools that have been given to you to serve heaven, to serve good. Before we're talking about God even, Hashem and His commandments, simply to be who He made you to be. Ve'ahavta l'racha kamocha. Racha, your friend, is Hashem. You should love Hashem kamocha, as you are. That's how you should love Hashem. Ve'ahavta l'racha kamocha. You need to love Him as you are. As you are. You should love Him from your location, from your spot, from your place. You should love. And the way to love, first of all, is to understand that you are loved. That heaven loves you. That your ancestors are standing in heaven and they loved you. That Abraham and Jacob and Isaac and Sarah and Rivka and Rachel and Leah and also Bilha and Zilpa, they're standing and they love you. They love you. All the holy tribes, they love you. You know why? Because you are the fruit that came out of their branches. They find themselves in your face even when you cannot recognize yourself. Oh, stupid you, your name is Jacob. Oh, ah, forgot that. Oh, Sarah, ah, I forgot that. Oh, Yael, ah, ah I figured out. Ah, Aaron, ah, okay. You don't remember who you are. But from a tree of mandarins, apples never grows. Only mandarins coming out. From the holy tree of Israel, only Israeli souls are coming out. Even in the ten holy tribes that are in the exile and they disappeared between the nations and you cannot recognize them because today they look Chinese, they look like Africans, they look like no matter where they are, like in Pakistan, they look like a people that lives in Pakistan. In India, they look like a people that lives in India. You cannot track them. You cannot recognize them. They have foreign names. They have different customs. They, they behave like their places, like they're, they're in the nation that they live in right now. But I'll tell you something. You know who they are? They are the lost children of Jacob and two of his wives. Three of his wives, maybe even four of his wives. Because 10 out of 12 tribes went to the exile. And we forgot about them. Oh, where they are? Oh, let's take care of the Jewish nation. Great, help your brothers. But don't ignore the main part of your family that is still out there, located elsewhere. Don't even remember that they are Israelis. Don't even know that and cannot figure it out by themselves. But you know what will happen to them when the spirit of Mashiach will be powerful enough to wake up the spirits? Suddenly, a person in India and another person in Lebanon and another person in Russia and another person in Sweden going to open their eyes one day and going to say, Hey, I love Israel. I love the Bible, I love Moses, I want to put Philin. Suddenly so they're going to start acting crazy. And you know what their father will tell them? Don't make a joke out of yourself and going to turn his back on him. And you know what their mother will tell him? I'd rather you to be gay than Jewish and walk away. But you know what they will do? They will go back to their nature of being Hebrews. Ivriim. What's the meaning of the word Hebrews? Ivriim. Avraham Ha'ivri. That's the first time we heard about the name Hebrew on Abram, that he was the head of the believers. And it's written on him that he was a Hebrew. What that means? 
that all the world was standing in one side and Abram was standing in the other side. Ever means side in the ancient language of Hebrew. When you say Ivri means that he passed to the other side. All the world were worshipping idols and he realized that it was a mistake. So he went with his true understanding, listening to his kidneys that were advising him, listening to the voice of his heart, to an inner voice that told him, leave the house of your father, go to the unknown, to the land that I'm going to show you. I want to see you do that. When you'll do that, you will show the real nature of being a child of Abram and Sarah, of Isaac and Rivka and Jacob and one of his four wives. It doesn't matter if you're Jewish or if you're one of those people that belongs to the rest of the tribes. If you're from the tribe of Yehuda and you are today called Jewish, it doesn't make you superior or higher than one of your brothers from the tribe of Asher, Zvulun, Naphtali, God. Forgive me. But that's the truth. We were all sitting together on the table of our father and his wives. And all of us are siblings. We're all meant to sit together and there will be no one left behind. That's the secret behind creation. That in the end, in one moment, everyone will remember. Suddenly the Creator will turn on the light of the souls and the spirits will recognize themselves. Means exactly like I explained to you that your simple work is supposed to be, that you should recognize your true nature, that you will dare to be who you are, that you will find out who you really are, that you're going to follow your heart, going to follow your instincts, going to follow your, your deep understanding that you should be good and you should be brave and you should protect the weak and that you should use the qualities and your talents and your abilities and your wisdom and that you should dream your dream and that should, you should hope your hopes and that should pray your prayers. Be who you are. That will be the result of redemption. And it will take place in the hearts of all the children, boys and girls of Jacob and his four wives. All the seed of the twelve tribes are about to wake up. And it's going to be a wild, wide, worldly awakeness. Suddenly hundreds of millions of people going to recognize their true nature and going to look at the world as the most foreign and dark place in the world and will desire home. Where is home? Home is where your heart is. is. That's where home is. Where your heart belongs. And they will follow their heart. They will not think about converting. They will not think about changing locations. They will be lions that are chasing and running after a divine goal, a meaningful life of purpose. They will know the truth and they will stand for you and you will stand for them. And you should recognize yourself between us, between your nation, between that godly nation, 12 tribes that were standing and receiving the holy tablets from Mount Sinai, not only Jewish people there. Jewish is one nation, is one tribe, tribe of Yehuda. You're going to say the tribe of Binyamin joined? Those are the two tribes. Some Levites joined them as well. Perfect, that's what you have. All the rest today lives in Pakistan, in Uzbekistan, in Russia, in India, in all the world, in China, in Japan. Today you have groups, you have communities that you can see and recognize symbols, ways of, 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 of traditions that have been kept from thousands of years ago when the king of Ashur exiled ten of the tribes of Israel and sent them to Chalach, Abu uh, uh, and, 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 and Gozen. And from those places they went and spread in the world. They disappeared. 
You can see some things, those things that you can see, those tiny communities that are the leftovers of the holy tribes are only there to remind us of their existence, that we will not forget them. But all of their families that have been separated from them, and today are Muslims, today are Christians, today I don't know what they do with their lives, working in factories in China, I don't know what. They are our siblings, with no connection to the color of their skin and to the nations that they are located in. They are the children of Jacob. They are the children of Rachel, of Leah. They are the children of our parents. Those are our brothers. We cannot help them to recognize themselves before we recognize ourselves. Not as Jewish going proudly with the tzitzit. It's nonsense. This is a physical tzitzit. You need to have your spiritual tzitzit on you. You need to be connected with your mind to who you are. You need to represent the Creator even if you find yourself naked, barefoot in the middle of the street, in the middle of the night. You should remember your soul, who you are and what's your mission. Even if you find yourself with a hangover after 48 hours in a bar, you need to go back to your roots. You need to come back to your true self and to remember who you are, who the Creator sent you. Like the life story of all the Baalei Tshuva. I woke up out of complete darkness. I was a soldier in the army. I never kept Shabbat. I was eating in Yom Kippur. I would watch movies all Yom Kippur. And we wouldn't keep no holidays. We wouldn't do anything. I ate everything that, kept, that can swim or have legs. Everything that has a mother, I ate. <laughs> but one day the Creator opened my eyes and I realized, hey, why are you ignoring Shabbat? Why are you not putting tefillin? Why won't you go and visit the Western Wall? Why won't you go and... Lakes, springs, water holes, amazing experience. I didn't know what I was causing to myself when I started walking in that path of tshuva. I was not choosing it. I didn't know what I'm choosing. I was not there for my religion. I didn't start in my process to become religious. It was the last thing I wanted in life. I was searching for my truth. I felt that I'm lying to myself, that I'm not who I am, that I'm going with my friends to places that I don't like, that I dress to certain things because I want to impress people, that I'm talking in different ways with different people. I suddenly started to feel that I'm a liar, that I'm not my true self, that I'm not being honest with myself. And then I decided to change. And that change brought me to realize, hey, you're Jewish. Their change will bring them to understand, hey, you are Zvulun, you are Asher, you are Naftali, you are God. It doesn't matter. They got to understand from which tribe they came. And their root is Jacob and one of his wives. That's the redemption. And it's taking place. And the evidence for that is you and, and, and me. Is us. I haven't woke up based on the merit of my holiness when I was 20. No, no. Not based on my holiness I woke up. Based on the unconditional love of a parent to his child. They decided to call me back even though I lost my way completely. Completely. I woke up after an after party in Amsterdam in Shabbos morning at 12 a.m. walking with wide pupils looking for my way back to the hotel. That's where I woke up. After swallowing amounts of drugs that a human being is not supposed to consume in no situation, no matter how sick he is. But I was that sick. And drugs woke me up, and alcohol woke me up, and car accidents woke me up, and bad parties woke me up, and some other things woke you up. And everyone woke up for something else. 
that woke him up to understand that he is not walking in the right path, not because he's not orthodox, because he's lying to himself, because he is not himself. Now out of your journey of finding your true self, if you find inside of yourself a passion to put filin, go put filin. To keep Shabbat, keep Shabbat. If your passion pulls you to illustrate, to paint, to sing, my advice, go sing. King David was a singer. He was a poet. He was a player. He was an artistic soul that gave freedom to his talents. So the Bible is describing him as a dancer and as a poet and as a singer and as a loner and as a lover. Many things. And he was righteous. And he was pure. But he knew what it was to follow your heart. When he loved someone, he went all the way. By the way, Jacob was also a person. He also loved someone in his life. And he also knew how to respect his second wife. That was his first one. And he knew how to follow the voice of his soul and to run away from the house of his parents. And also Isaac was like that. And also Abraham, like we said. And also Moses, that man of God, that pillar of light, Moses. Moses was so brave you cannot believe. Moses was a rebel. Moses was arguing and fighting with the Creator of the world on daily basis. No matter what Hashem told him, he disagreed. Hashem tells him, go to the Holy Land. I'm sending my angels to protect you. Moshe is telling him, if you're not coming with us, we're not going. No, we're sorry. We're not going. If you're not coming, we're not going. You're not going to send me with your angels. Sorry. When Hashem tells him, I'm going to bring down my decrees, I'm going to punish Moses twice. He's telling him, you can kill me first if you want to kill them. You can erase me from the book that you wrote if you want to start with them. Hashem didn't want it. At least, Hashem didn't express His will to give the holy tablets at all. But Moses went up to that place that caused Marom, the highest place of them all, and in that place that always, until that moment, only Moses, the only person in the world that walked into that divine and high place, because over there the verse is saying that Hashem is alone in that place, and Moses suddenly opened the doors and burst in, and holds the tablets while Hashem is learning Torah and start fighting and battling with Hashem. And it's written, Gavar Kochoshel Moshe, that Moshe overpowered. Hashem was stronger than Hashem in that battle. And he stolen the tablets from him. He took them with force to give them to the nation, to his people. And when he came down, suddenly he's realizing that they are off track, that they're off course, that they are all dancing and worshiping idols and they lost the way. What Moses is doing with the holy tablets, handmade by the Shem, that been took in force from heaven, carved with the finger of God before of creation. He is breaking them down to the ground. I want to see you do that. I want to see you take a Sefer Torah and start cutting it to pieces. Throw the Bible to the ground. I want to see you dare do that. First Bible that been given ever. First Testament. First Holy Tablets handmade by heaven. He smashes them to the ground. What? Yes. <laughs> Who? Who? Bil'am, Paro, Haman Rasha. Who? Who did that? No, it was Moses. Oh, <gasps> yes, Moses. Why? Because Moses was not a coward. Moses was a man of truth. Moses was a person that was looking between the cracks to find the real will of heaven. Even if heaven is telling him no, he is saying, you know what? Listen, 
Let's talk. I'm not accepting no for now. Let's talk. And he's arguing for 40 days, days and nights, not eating, not drinking, not sleeping, arguing and fighting until Hashem is telling him, I will do as you wish, whatever you say. Hashem is surrendering to him. Hashem gives him the power to lead his nation because he, Hashem, recognized in that man, Moses, a brave soul that is searching for good, that have grace and mercy for lives of people, that he doesn't want to see no one dead, no one suffers, and he's ready to sacrifice himself for his siblings. So Hashem is choosing him him and not the scholars, him and not the judges, him and not the head and princes of the holy tribes, him and not his elder brother, him and no one else. Why? Because he will run after a small animal, after a, 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 a lamb to save him when he's lost in the desert. And he will forget everything else and will dedicate his life for that poor small animal to water it, to pet it, to love it, to show an endless love to a harmless and hopeless creature. He can represent the Creator's love to his nation, to his creation. And that's what we are experiencing when the Creator is talking to us and reminding of our true nature, reminding us of who we really are because he's coming down from heaven and it's a long way from heaven to hell. It's a long way. And he's coming down to wake up our souls on daily basis. When you wake up while you eat, when you wake up while you watch a Facebook video that inspires you or a YouTube, Hashem is entering himself to the most contaminated places to wake you up. Hashem is inside Facebook, inside Twitter, inside SoundCloud, inside all those filthy outlets. Hashem is there. His spirit is swimming in those channels to fish the lost souls one after the other. Another video, another class, another chat, another group. And one after the other waking up and coming back to the core to the secret and essence of creation, <clears throat> to be connected to the Creator that created you as you are. Not to change, just to understand the real nature of who you are and to follow that inner light of your soul forever. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Now listen, I'm paying to, to, to download those classes for you. Like, it's not an easy mission. So, um, please um, respect yourselves by respecting our effort and uh, help us to keep on spreading that light to millions of souls that are still out there in complete darkness and doesn't know who they are. We're driving like crazy, eight hours, 10 hours every day, all in one van, driving, crossing the country. One month and a half, we haven't slept in one place more than a couple of days. Be strong and help us please to support our activities around the world, saving the souls of Israel, the Jewish ones, and the rest of those souls. Everyone equal, everyone important, everyone are great loving every good soul and revealing the godly love of heaven on each and every single one of his children. Thank you very much. May Hashem bless you always. Amen. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit emuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.